best job ever that happened every day. Lusta says it was merely a lack in judgment. WCBS News Time 12:28. Time for traffic and weather together on the eighth. And how's it going on the Tappan Zee Bridge, Chris Bajan? Well, I'm gonna try and steer you as far away from it as I can, uh, folks. We've got delays in each direction. The left lane is blocked both ways following an earlier crash. Apparently, it did a little bit of damage to that center divider. So again, left lane blocked both ways on the Tappan Zee Bridge. Southbound throughway delays begin at exit 13. Uh, the northbound throughway on the Westchester side, all obviously very heavy. Your uh, delays on the uh, westbound side of 287 begin at exit 8. Connecticut and Long Island highways not too bad. So we'll talk about the five boroughs and this uh, crash on the westbound Belt Parkway near the Van Wyck. It's now over on the shoulder of the roadway. Hudson River crossings, uh, actually the inbound GW bridge is about 10 minutes, maybe 15 for the upper level. Other than that, the uh, Lincoln and Holland tunnels are both in good shape. Traffic sponsored by Amtrak. This summer, Amtrak Guest Rewards members can earn 3,000 bonus points for every three round trips they take on Acela Express. The more you ride, the more rewards. Up to 9,000 bonus points. Restrictions apply. For details, go to AmtrakGuestRewards.com. Now here's John Elliott in the CBS2 Weather Center. Thank you so much, Chris. Good afternoon, everybody. And it is going to be a good afternoon. If a little bit breezy. We'll see this northwest wind. We've got gusts right now to about 25 miles an hour, but remember that's a drier wind, so the humidity slowly drops. Numbers will continue to climb a bit. We're at 87 now in New York, up to 90 for a high today. Still above normal. Right around where we should be tomorrow, that means low to mid-80s with low humidity and lots of sun. Saturday's great. Sunday's a little more humid. It's going to be warmer Sunday into Monday. Monday, Tuesday, 30% chance of a shower or thunderstorm, and we need it. 87 and partly sunny now. I'm John Elliott in the WCBS Weather Center. Sponsored by J.C. Penney. Now at J.C. Penney, jockey men's underwear are buy one pack, get the second 50% off. New look, new day, who knew? J.C. Penney. WCBS News Time, 1230. Traffic and weather. Fire. This Friday, August 6th. I'm Pat Farnack. Here are the stories making news. Passengers react to full body scanners being installed at the area's three major airports. Latest jobs numbers show the unemployment rate did not budge last month. BP says it may someday drill again in the oil reservoir beneath that well that is now sealing for good. City of Camden prepares to close down its library system. New York City kicks off its summer street program, turning over Park Avenue to pedestrians, bikers, and swimmers. In sports, Yankees host the Red Sox tonight. Our extended pregame show begins at 6 o'clock on WCBS, and the Mets visit the Phillies tonight. WCBS News Time, 1231. You may have to check your shyness along with your baggage next time you head to one of the area's major airports. Some travelers here at Newark Liberty Airport see the full body scanners going in next month at security checkpoints here at LaGuardia and JFK as an invasion of privacy. I don't want to come to the airport and be violated like that. No. Even if for our safety. Isn't that what metal detectors are doing? What the full body scanner to do? Nothing. She thinks it'll hold up security lines, but this guy says he went through one in Richmond, Virginia in about 10 seconds. They checked the scanner. There's two people, male, female, full boom you go through. And at age 55, no longer ashamed of his body on an x-ray screen. If I was a, a younger guy and the old or the old guy were looking at me, maybe I'd mind or vice versa. At Newark Liberty Airport, we bought the WCBS 880 News. Old broad, he said, I think. WCBS News Time, 1232. Well, the latest jobs report shows the economy shedding 131,000 jobs and the unemployment rate holding steady at 9.5%. Fox Business News correspondent Connell McShane says that some sectors of the economy have improved but that a true recovery will need job growth to pick up the pace. The one thing that has not been able to get itself turned around is, uh, has, has been jobs. And until that happens, um, it's going to be tough to say that we're, we're through this. Are we out of the recession uh, in terms of um, how it's classically defined by economists? Yeah, we probably are. But until it feels like we are, it really doesn't matter to many Americans who, who remain out of work. The number of Americans looking for a job, meanwhile, is believed to be at more than 14 million people. Well, if you thought the Gulf Reservoir that gushed oil for more than three months would be sealed forever, we're wrong. BP is saying today that it might someday drill again there because there is still so much oil and gas down there. Meanwhile, 
CBS reporter Dave Cohen in New Orleans says they will be watching the cement dry in that broken well this weekend. National Incident Commander Thad Allen says five to seven days after they discover that the cement is dry, they'll go ahead and finish that relief well with just the last couple of inches to go after some more magnetic resonance imaging to make sure they're right on target, pierce that blown out well, and then fill it with cement from the bottom. The oil reservoir beneath the well could still be worth billions of dollars. WCBS News Time, 12:33. Well, the city of Camden, New Jersey, is preparing to close down its library system at the end of this year because of money problems. Jerome Spila is the library's director. This library's been here for 105 years. The city of Camden is one of, is one of the poorest cities in the country. It has a very high illiteracy rate. Citizens would be deprived of a public library service time in over 100 years. Our computer services or internet services will no longer be available in a city where many people do not have computers, their own computers at home. The day after school programs that we have for children, the summer programs, as well as the books and DVDs would no longer be available for the students. The city council will meet next week to see if something can be done to keep the city's three branches open. WCBS News Time, 12:34. The debate is over. Here's what we've learned. Ned Lamont downsized his company by 70%, leaving only eight workers here in Connecticut, and paid himself a half a million dollars. The Hartford Current uncovered that Lamont was sued for racial discrimination. Lamont even opposes paid sick leave. That's right, you get sick. Lamont says you don't get paid. The Journal Inquirer says there is no evidence that Lamont is ready to be governor. Ned Lamont, CEO values that cost Connecticut. The Hartford Current endorses Dan Malloy, saying he is the better choice for the challenges ahead. And the Norwich Bulletin says Nancy Wyman is a forceful advocate for sound fiscal planning. The Current, Bulletin, Connecticut Post, New London Day, Congressman John Larson, and the Connecticut Democratic Party all endorse Dan Malloy and Nancy Wyman, the team with the values and experience that money can't buy. Paid for by Dan Malloy for Governor, Len Miller Treasurer, and Wyman 2010 as well Salemi Treasurer. I'm Dan Malloy. I'm Nancy and we approve this message. WCBS News Time, 12:35. Let's check the numbers. Well, uh, no relief in sight so far on Wall Street. Everything's still down. The Dow is down 142 and 10,546. The Nasdaq is down 32 points, and the S&P is down 16 points. And crude is uh, losing a little ground. It's down to $80.89. And we'll check those numbers again in 10 minutes. WCBS News Time, 1235. For the next three Saturdays, Park Avenue.